Peace and blessings, beloved. I'm Giovanna Tisdale, the spiritual healer. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my sanctuary. Today I will be doing a spiritual love forecast for the week ahead. I used to do these readings um, every week and I have truly missed being able to show up in this space. Initially, I wanted to do it live, but I'm still trying to get settled and just didn't feel right about wanting to do it live just yet because my desk and stuff still has not arrived so i've got all my decks just out and about and i just would like my space to come together um, before i get back into the flow of doing that so i don't know what decks i'm going to use i pulled out a few um so we're just gonna go with it and see what comes up. I've already done my cleansing and prayers and all the things. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's do a little bit of a collective breath here just to really calm your heart, calm your mind, center yourself so that you can also be open to receive. So just take a deep breath in. And when you're ready, release that breath, breathing out, taking another breath in. And one more. and release. I can feel like when I start to read, I get very excited. There's a lot of energy that starts moving around. And so it helps me to take a few breaths once I, you know, hit record and and go. So, you may hear some noise in the background because my daughter is playing and it is what it is. So, Hey, ooh. So I'm using the power of love. These are one of my favorite decks um, by James Van Prague. Very beautiful cards. Um, I enjoy working with them. So the theme for this week is respect. You can align with the frequency of love. Tap into spiritual love through respect. And it's very interesting because this morning as I was starting my day, I had some beautiful love songs playing, but not really for anyone else, but for me. Um, I think first and foremost that they have a lot of power, especially when we are using the energy of those words to focus that love upon ourselves. So one of my favorite songs is... Thank God I found you. Um, who's that? Mariah Carey and I want to say Boys to Men. Love that song. And that is the perfect love spell for yourself. It's, you know, she's like, thank God I found you. I was so lost without you. And I just think about in the moments when I was lost, when I was going through my dark nights of the soul, because I had more than one and just really having to come back home to myself so that's one of my you know deep self-love songs when i am pouring on self-love so you might want to make yourself a self-love playlist like that some of the love songs that you know you like to think about when you're thinking about your ideal partner and apply those lyrics and that energy to yourself So the, the card that I pulled um, as far as aligning is respect. You value everyone's unique perspe perspective on the path to love. And I thought that was very interesting because relationships and love, what that looks like for every individual is completely different. And 
one of the examples that I like to share is if you are desiring a partner, but you're always rolling your eyes because you see, you know, those couples that are just all over each other, they're holding hands, they're kissing, and you're just like, oh my God, like, can you stop? That's kind of blocking love because it's like you don't want to be open to it in the world around you if you're not a part of it or if it doesn't look like the way that you want it to or maybe because you want that and you don't have that so there's a bit of envy instead of looking at it as you know something that you don't have i like to see those examples um or experiences as examples of what can be right what you can manifest my work as a massage therapist, I really, really love it because it shows how much love there really is in the world. I have a lot of clients who are happily married. They you know, are treating their partners to a spa day, or treating their partner to a massage, and they love each other. So love is real and who someone chooses to love we have to respect that. Um, you value everyone's unique perspective on the path to love. Even with that, like I think about those times in which maybe we're in a relationship that is not the healthiest. So, you know, we're, we want to make it work and we're crying to our friends and over and over and just trying to get support and guidance and this and that. And I've been there, I've been that friend. And after a while, like people don't want to hear it, but hold on, it's my lips, y'all, my lips. Okay, that's better. Thank you. One of the things that I learned is that even when we are in a relationship that is not for us, when it's something that is unhealthy or misaligned or it's just not growing, Until we or you come to that understanding within yourself, nothing anyone else tells you is going to matter because your heart, your intention is fixed on being with this person, on resolving the issues, on making it work. And so what you're looking for, even if it is a shit show, is just support and maybe an outlet. And what I've learned is that oftentimes our friends cannot be that outlet. Our loved ones cannot be that outlet because they see things completely differently. If you're going to and you're telling your, you know, your friends, your family, about every bad thing this person has done. And maybe they do do a complete 180, they change their life around um, and things are good, they're still gonna have that image of them as the monster that you painted for them, even if they have changed. And so I'm not saying to settle or to stay in a bad situation, but I think there, it comes to a point where we have to respect where people are on their path and on their journey because you telling them to leave or they're no good um, or you can do better is going to fall upon deaf ears until it clicks within them until they get tired of trying until they are able to step back and have that broader perspective so you know and i i, I went through that and it wasn't until I was like, okay, I need to process this on my own. I worked with a therapist. I talked things out. I relied heavily on my journal and left outside noise alone because I needed to listen to my heart and what my heart wanted. And doing that was very helpful because there was no room left to doubt anymore. Because I tried, I gave it 100%, and at the end, it wasn't for me. 
and I was able to walk away with no regret, no remorse, like no anything. I just and move forward. Um, and even just looking at the rainbow colors on the card, I think that first and foremost, what love has been painted to be is a gross misrepresentation. We only think that, you know, love exists in these little boxes and these little containers, and that's not the case. Um, respecting how you love and how you need to be loved is also a big thing that is coming up. And sometimes we don't know what that is because we've never experienced love, which is why I always recommend heavy self love after you get out of a relationship or you know if you're just single you're not really dating get to know yourself a lot of times we and i've seen this especially within men i'm sure women do it too but they'll jump out of one relationship um or you know right into the next one or they're nurturing the next thing because they can feel this one slipping away so it's like a lot of times they're never taking the time <coughs> to um to process and to review so inside of my course energy of love there's a section that is a relationship review i don't guide you through it i do that in like a one-on-one -on -one practice but I give you some key things that you can do looking back at your relationship to really review it so that you can extract the nuggets of wisdom out of that situation. Figure out, you know, how are you showing up? How can you show up differently? How can you avoid certain things? And it just helps you to take, um, I guess, accountability and really just have a greater awareness of where you are um, on the frequency of love as well and how that helps to weave in to your relationship outcomes and things like that. I think it's really beautiful that respect is the word that came up. And I think before you can respect someone else's perspective on love, the type of relationship they desire to be in, you really have to have that self-loving intention within yourself. My journey went from leaving an abusive relationship to really focusing on my mindset and my emotional state. That was like the positive forward movement where I was really like looking at my mind, my thought process, you know, going to therapy, learning to meditate, to clear out the chatter, to really come to an understanding of how the fuck did I get here? Once I was able to identify that root, I was able to find different wounds throughout childhood, throughout my life that um, put me in a position to be living out of trauma, out of fear and out of old wounding. So once I identified what that was, and a lot of it boils down to self-love, which ties into worth and deservability and confidence and self-esteem and boundaries and being assertive and all of these different things. Then I began to focus on self-love. Once I did that, then I was able to really focus on what is love? And that's when spiritual love was revealed to me and you know, aligning with love and viewing love as energy um, and then, you know, just it's a beautiful cycle. So I know what love is to me. And even if someone else does not agree, then that's okay. Their version of love may look different. And that's okay as long as it is legal, as long as it is consensual, um, as long as it is not harmful and abusive and manipulative. Um, let that be what it is, right? We all want to align with love. And for some people, love looks like just, you know, dating and having friends and really enjoying their single life. For some people, they don't want a commitment or a long-term relationship. Some people want to have open relationships or have multiple partners. Um, so again, 
love looks different for all of us. And I think once we realize that, then that really shifts things. There's something about this that's really coming through because um, diving deeper, I have the crown chakra and loudspeaker. Like this is a message that is being broadcast from spirit. And because of the year that we are in, it is so harmonious for manifesting love. And I think this is not even about romantic relationships. I think it's more about community as a whole, especially when we're tying in that respect component. Much of the trauma, the struggle, the war, the hatred that we are seeing is because people do not respect other people's beliefs. Whether it's about relationships, whether it's about religion, whether it's about money, whether it's about the way you raise children, people do not respect other people's beliefs. And until we can all come to an agreement that it is okay for you to believe something different and still be able to respect another person, a lot of that stuff is is gonna continue to happen and it doesn't have to happen. Um, because when you're operating out of love, you are respectful of others, you have compassion and empathy, there's forgiveness, there's understanding. You can communicate without it blowing up into, you know, a full-fledged campaign of hate. There's something here, um, especially as we're moving into, you know, the age of Aquarius, where speaking up, speaking up for others, speaking up for yourself, and really sharing what it is that you believe so you can, you know, number one, you can connect with other like-minded community members. This is not what I expected. I thought I was just going to pull some cards and talk about, you know, the energy of love this week. But there is a very heavy message that is coming out here. And um, it's one where, too, I feel like this is something that maybe we should all meditate on. You know, how can you value someone else's perspective without it wounding your ego, without it making you feel like something is broken in your life. And so one of the things that's coming up is religion. Um, and this is a perfect example. There are a number of different religions and I actually recorded a rant video on this last year that I have not posted, but I think I may. And, you know, I've studied a lot of different religions. I've been to a lot of different religious temples, spaces, churches. Um, and I've never had anyone from a religious faith be disrespectful towards me or towards my beliefs outside of a particular religion there. And, and I'm sure you know who it is or what, you know, sector that it is. And that is a prime example of needing to respect other people's perspectives because just because you believe this and I believe that doesn't give you the right to disrespect what I believe. You simply operate in your container of belief and if you don't have the inner willpower, the strength or the respect for another human to be respectful of their wishes and their beliefs, then you leave them alone. But oftentimes that's not what happens and people feel like they have the right to beat other people over the head with what they believe. As adults, we should know by now that everyone is going to believe something different and that is okay. That's why different things exist because there are different cultures. Um, it's like, and I, <laughs> had this example of like, if if we're both hungry and we both want to no longer be hungry, right? We wanna satiate ourselves, we want to feed ourselves and we both want sandwiches, but you use pumpernickel bread and turkey and I use honey wheat and I don't know, chicken or pastrami and we eat our sandwiches and it feeds us, it nourishes us. Why would you berate someone 
because they don't like pumpernickel bread or because they don't like turkey. It sounds stupid, right? Like what I eat, what I feed my soul with doesn't affect you. So again, I can be respectful of what you believe and that's what we need to do. We are moving into a space where uh, respect needs to be the operating principle. You don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. But at the core, at the underpinning, you have to respect it because that is what it is about. It's about respecting your fellow man. And, you know, on a grand scale, everything is connected. We are all connected. And I think this is the information that is trying to like anchor in to more people is that we are all connected. So this theme of respect is going to be broadcast very loudly throughout 2024. Um, whew, okay. Respect, which is very interesting because in the 2024 overview, loyalty was the card that I pulled for the year as far as spiritual love. And that's really interesting that respect would be coming up here for the collective. And look, we have loudspeaker and throat chakra. Um, whoa, there's so much that I want to say. Hold on. I'm trying to slow, slow it down. Um, whew. I feel like there, there's a message here for me that especially because of the work that I do, um, I'm going to, this is, is my year to show up with teaching and reading and using the downloads that I receive and really sharing the messages. Um, and I think for me too, with respect, <laughs> I was just talking about this um, on the most recent podcast of the Abundantly Ever After show where I was talking about why love and money. One of the things that I mentioned is the fact that we have to get over all of our differences and begin to operate as a collective community. And also the fact that I need to expand my reach to men. And so the past year or two, I've had to get right. I've had to get clean around working with men, around my own biases with men, healing a lot of stuff <laughs> so that I can be a true um, container for the divine masculine as well. So I feel like that is something <laughs> that spirit is telling me that I need to do personally, and that might resonate for you. There may be some idea that you've had in a way that you can serve your community, whether you know that is at home or your community at large, in a way that is going to bring healing by you know bridging alliances and helping to connect people and ideas. But there's this theme of like respect. If there's just simple respect, even in you know my last relationship. Like if someone respects you, they're not going to play you. They're not going to use you. They're not going to manipulate you. They're going to come to you with the truth and say, this is what I want or this is what it is. And a lot of people do not have that because they don't respect themselves. Whew. Whew. Mm. Now that is a message. Their crown chakras are blocked. Their egos are running rampant and taking control. And they are boastful and they are loud about the wrong things, about things that don't matter, about that materialistic, about that fake love, about struggle love. Uh, I don't know why I'm hearing alpha male. Oh, my Lord. But um, there's, there's ego driven. And these people, they don't know how to express themselves authentically because they lack self-respect and self-love. I need to do um, a healing circle and meditation uh, around this. Wow. Okay, I guess spirit was not playing today. <laughs> I thought I was just going to come on here and pull some cards. Like, this is the energy for the week. And they're like, no, 
we have some meat and potatoes. Share them. Mm. The crown chakra and throat chakra are bridged by the third eye chakra. Your throat chakra is your self-expression. It's um, how you show up in the world. Of course, it is what you speak as you speak you create. Also, what you think you create. Your thoughts are manifestations. Your thoughts become things. If you're not able to see the way in which what you think and what you speak manifests in your life, you're creating chaos in your own life. If you are judging other people for the way that they look, for the way that they love, for the way that they, uh, you know, worship, for their belief systems, um, for their journey, like if you are judging other people, you are causing chaos in your own life. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's something about needing to be honest and... Um, Judge yourself, like speak your truth, holding yourself accountable. And also advocating for yourself, knowing and which requires knowing what you want. Again, that crown chakra energy, being connected in with your higher self, with you know your heart space, knowing what it is that you desire so that you can advocate for yourself so that when someone comes into your life who is not operating um, within the frequency of spiritual love, you are able to see them clearly and you're able to, um, to say no, to uphold your boundaries and to navigate that in a better way. There's a bridging of what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you desire, and you being able to manifest that through your thoughts. So there's, um, excuse me, through your words. Be mindful of what you're speaking. Be mindful of what you're speaking over yourself, over your children, over your life, over your money, over everything. Because it is manifesting. It is manifesting. I want to see something really quick about this respect card. <laughs> it's everything that I... <laughs> yeah it's important for you to remember that everyone in this physical dimension has their own journey filled with struggles and obstacles that are different for yours they chose their life blueprint just as you cho chose yours it's not your job to judge how they discover their way to love rather it is your job to encourage them by showing respect you earn respect when someone comes into your space, they are immediately aware of your level of integrity and your willingness to help others. You carry yourself with a certain natural strength and people look up to you. This is why I was just saying how people will come into your life and you have to have the discernment to see whether they are of integrity, whether they, whether they are operating out of a space of respect or whether they are coming into your life to cause chaos. <sighs> Let's see. Be mindful of what you are receiving. Um, receiving can be you know, any messages, any ideas that you get, it can also be what you're watching on, you know, TV, Netflix, YouTube, um, what you're looking at on social media, who you're letting speak to you and how you're letting them into your spaces. Um, are they respectful of your time? Are they respectful of your space? Are they, are they respectful of you, of your energy, of your essence? If not, you need to speak up. You need to, you know, set some boundaries. Doesn't mean you have to cut everybody out of your life, but you really need to create space for a res 
respectful container around you that you're feeling with love and respect for yourself that you are uh, mandating that others will do the same as well i like this yes no fluffiness here anything else So with loudspeaker and um, mm, it's like I'm hearing respect starts at home. What you do behind closed doors, what you're doing in your home, if you're a parent, you know, what you're modeling to your children, are you being respectful of them? Because they are echoes, they are vibration, um, you know, that, that frequency that you're putting out is radiating around you. So make sure that you're right. Make sure that you are in alignment with the frequency of being respectful and being self-loving and being um, loving to your own self and respectful of yourself, which is like honoring your commitments, being loyal to yourself. Going back to the card that I um, pulled previously, I'm going to go back and watch that because I feel like there's something in it that needs to be expounded upon. I think too, if you you know are saying prayers, gratitudes, and affirmations, say them out loud. There is something with the power of the voice, um, speaking things, singing, humming, the music that you're listening to. There's something powerful with sound right now. Play healing frequencies as well. That's something that I do often. Um, I keep something playing in my home. Um, yeah, okay, I think that is it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> um, let me see something. Let me see what else loudspeaker has to say. Oh, that's right. This wait, is this one in order? Nope. Because it's May. Oh, there it is. Each moment is a new opportunity to shift and tune your channel and paint with the colors you are wanting to exp experience and express. Thoughts create form. So it's is what I just said. Um, loudspeaker. It's like an echoing. Your your thoughts are going out into the universe. If you want to manifest love, you need to change your thought frequency to those of love, of being loved, of having love, of feeling love. You need to, you know, if you wanna manifest money, put that out there because you, like, and I, I can, oof. Whatever is happening right now, you can become an energetic match to what you want in an instant there's a connection to spirit that is allowing what you speak and what you think to come to fruition guard your thoughts guard your heart um, you know pay attention to what it is you're thinking meditation would be a very great practice um, Feel how you want to feel because, and if you have not been feeling good um, or, you know, if you've been feeling stressful or anything like that, shift that energy. Shift that energy because this is a very beautiful time for living abundantly ever after. And these cards are definitely showing it. Be respectful and, you know, be open to receive because we are in a beautiful energy of receiving right now. Whew, that is it. I love you. I honor you. Um, this took a different turn, but I'm, I'm appreciative of the way that it went. Until next time, peace. Oh, I wanted to share really quick before I sign off. My... Um, I am open for email readings. I decided to do email readings just because I'm... I, have, I am working on a lot of projects and it's easy for me to sit and do an email reading 
I also channel while I write and I love to write, so it just helps me. Um, all of my readings now are $88. I do have a a one-on-one -on -one reading that we do by phone or Zoom that is, I think, 222. It's a level up in love session. All of my other readings, there's a spiritual love tarot general reading. Um, all the email readings are $88. I try to get them back to you within two to three business days. If that is ever different or gonna change, I'll notify you right away. So if you would like a reading to help you, um, you know, either heal after the end of a relationship for, um, I have my inner goddess guidance that's really about self-love. There, there are different options for you. I'll include the link and that is it. I love you, have a beautiful week, bye.